Welcome back. You're watching Financial Quotient, the CNBC TV 18 special series that deals with money and women. We're, of course, in, a, in conversation with a panel of seasoned financial investors. And the question is, what can be done to get women to really seize control, take charge of their finances and their uh, overall financial freedom and their destiny? Now, I want to talk about some data points that I got from AMFI, the Association of Mutual Funds of India. Uh, and this is data as of December 22, and it's promising data because it's talking about how the number of new women investors who are coming and investing in mutual funds, how those numbers are looking better and better. And there's been a tremendous improvement, interestingly, over the COVID period. So let's pull up the data for you. The increase is 58% December 2019 to December 22. So the number of new investors as of December 22 was 74 lakhs, 49,306 to be precise. This improvement is far more marked actually in tier two, tier three cities compared to the big metro cities. Though having said that, T30, which is the, the main metro cities, large cities, even there the growth is not bad. It's about 49% over the last three years. If we talk about the B30, which is beyond top, uh, top 30 cities, and there the growth number is fantastic. 72% increase in the number of new women investors that are coming in and investing in mutual funds. Uh, interestingly, in the age groups as well, uh, there's a lot of uh, improvement. So again, this is data over three years. I remind you, December 2019 to December 22. Young women, first time women investors coming in 18 to 24 years, it's uh, shown an increase of over 300%. So that's a 3x growth number for you. And even the mid-career uh, professional, the, the middle-aged uh, women, 25 to 35 young working professionals, the growth is over 100%. So some numbers that, that look promising. But Ms. Thorat, uh, this question to you really, because this is something that you're looking at very closely in your present capacity. Mutual funds have really become the stepping stone as uh, you know, investors and women. We move beyond banks and the traditional fixed deposit. Uh, do you think the MF industry has served uh, the cause well enough? What more needs to be done? Uh, you have to recognize that the overall investors in the mutual fund industry has increased significantly, mm -hmm. especially over the COVID yeah. period. Yeah. So it's not only women investors, overall investors, assets under management, number of investors. Even so, the data you are saying is absolutely correct. It's interesting to look at it in terms of the percentage. So the CAMS data for women power and mutual funds show, showed that 27% of all investors were now women. And even the SEBI and the CDSL data also showed that about 30% could be women investors. Now, one is assuming women investors are, are not just women in name, but actually taking the investment distance. That is an assumption one has to make if you have to draw a conclusion that become, women have become more savvy about their uh, investments. But I would actually, in, in some senses, not blame the woman. I want to blame the industry for not reaching out to women in a way that is appropriate for them. Mm. In a way, the products which they promote and the way they, I mean, it has to really be no frills product linked to their milestones in their lives and something that can appeal to them. Mm. I mean, when you look at the, uh, the, the kind of biases and processes in the financial sector industry is actually quite gender uh, bias. There is a gender bias. When you look at loans or when you want to give, uh, you know, collaterals, everything has to be in the name. I mean, there has to be a title. Mm. There has to be a title for transfer of security. Even a proof of identity is actually the husband's. So in a way, I would say, thank God for other. Th mm. You know, the, so therefore, there is a need, I feel, for even the sector to pr promote women's education and also make processes very simple for women. Mm. Have very plain vanilla products, index funds, matching their uh, you know various uh, points in the children's lives which they will need funds mm. i can give you a very small example of one of the cooperative banks in maharashtra which evolved a product for a woman because of the the woman had to meet uniform fees and she had to meet bags and school uniform and all that in the month of uh, April, uh, june and so they started a monthly savings product for very small amount so by it started in about august and by the time it was June, the money was available to her to actually meet the requirements. Mm. I mean, one has to devise products. Mm. I would say the sector also has to become much more innovative. No, absolutely. Manisha, uh, you know, same question to you. 
the fact that complexity has only increased in the BFSI uh, space, right? Products, uh, new asset classes, new ways of investing. So it's all DIY. It sounds very good. But perhaps uh, that's something that could be uh, putting off for a woman who's juggling multiple roles, as you uh, mentioned earlier. Your thoughts? Yeah, I completely agree. I think, you know, the jargon is too complicated, too complex. And as you said, in today's day and age, it's only getting more complex because investing has now become a global game. You know, India is an open economy. We're integrated with the rest of the world. So, you know, there are so many influences that can change the way uh, of investing. So I think that's basically deterring women. And that's why I always say to women that start young. Start when you get your first salary, you know, when the stakes aren't so high, start investing. Get a diversified portfolio, you know, get a financial planner, even if you want it at, at an early stage uh, and start start investing. That, at that point, the mistakes won't be so deep and that, you know, it will affect your family. And as Usha said, you know, the goals of the family. So uh, I think that's one way to beat the system is to basically start young so that this becomes part of your DNA. You know, as we discussed earlier, so we have great at multitasking. And why are we great at it? Because, you know, we've sort of seen that through childhood. Our mothers do it and it just sort of comes to us very naturally. Mm. Uh, finance, because we haven't done it uh, from beginning or from childhood, it doesn't come naturally to us. So mm. I think that's mm -hmm. what I'd like to see change from the women's perspective. That, you know, start investing early, build a diversified portfolio, you know, don't be at one end of the spectrum or the other, stay somewhere in the middle, mm. uh, learn from your own mistakes. You know, as, as Devita, Devina said and I said before, men make more mistakes, but, you know, they just keep on chugging along. And I think women need to do that. They need to make investment a way of life. And, and that's what I'm not seeing happening. No, absolutely. Devina, uh, why don't you come in? I mean, what's, what could be the possible answer, both from the industry's perspective, in terms of like uh, Ms. Surat mentioned, maybe just simpler products, products specifically marketed towards women. I don't think we've seen too much of that. While there's a lot towards new investors or young investors, maybe more, more women-centric products marketed. And also, what about the conversations at home? I mean, from everything that I hear all of you say, it seems we still have to ba battle certain gender stereotypes whether it's who's managing the house versus who's managing the money. I think we've not entirely crossed that bridge, have we? A long way from that. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, that's like putting it very mildly. If you look at the amount of uh, unpaid uh, uh, hours that Indian women put in versus uh, Indian men, the difference is the highest in the world. It's, it's a few minutes a day for the men, whereas it's about, I think, five or six hours for the women. So you're talking that kind of difference. Difference. The difference is all across the world, but nowhere is the difference so high that household work, emotional labor, looking after the family, which includes the husband's parents also, all that falls on the women. But I mean, leaving that aside for the moment, just coming back to the financial side, one message I want to give women is that 85 to 90 percent of your returns come from asset allocation not from specific stock selection. Hmm. So remember that. So it don't get daunted that at the parties, all these men are talking about, I discovered this stock six months ago and it's gone up three times. Hmm. I mean, I can assure you they would have talked about 20 other stocks which have gone nowhere. Sure. So just start young, as Manisha said. Yeah. Decide your asset allocation mm -hmm. that this much to equity, this much global, this much fixed income. Sure. And just start and start investing in the simplest sure. products, find simplest mutual fund, but get your asset allocation started. Start investing because starting investing today the same amount hmm. and starting investing five years later, your sure. retirement purpose is going to be very, very Absolutely. Different. So start early, as Manisha says, get your asset allocation sorted out. Uh, very quickly, uh, uh, Ms. Thorat and uh, Mr. Kumar, Final words, like quick tips, maybe that women can at least keep in mind when they're having these conversations with themselves and with those at home. Uh, Ms. Thorat? Uh, Ms. Thorat, if you could hear me, your, your final words of advice for women. Say passive funds, index funds, ETFs, I think very simple products. You can't really go wrong. Like you rightly said, you get your asset allocation straight. It doesn't matter. Don't do choice stock picking. Mm. Index, in fact, has done better than many of the individual mutual funds in the last couple of years. Mm. So I think it's it's not it's not really important. But certainly, don't hesitate to enter the equity. Yeah, I would say okay because that is something like even I myself, you know, felt always that was a riskier area and sure. didn't get in. But sure. I think the long term for long stable, you know, pick up some really good uh, combinations and go ahead with it. I think index funds or even some good mutual funds it's it's fine 
Mm. But certainly don't go overboard on any of these uh, very, very risky or very low grade Okay, keep it simple and look at equity. Uh, that's, that's important advice. We will today let uh, the man have the last word. So, Mr. Kumar, closing thoughts uh, and your final piece of advice for women out there. No, one is uh, about the awareness because when we are talking about asset allocation, my question is that how many, if you're talking about working women, they may understand, but uh, many of them would not understand what is asset allocation. You have to tell them in simple terms that put this much money in gold this much money in jewelry, this much money in mutual fund, and uh, that basic awareness uh, level first mm. needs to be based. Okay. Increased awareness, start early, understand things like asset allocation, and definitely look at equities. I think that sums up amazing advice that we've got from the panel today. Thank you all very much for joining in. Uh, it's been a pleasure hosting you, and it uh, really has been inspi inspiring, I'm sure, for all our viewers as well. Thanks for joining in. And thank you, viewers, for being with us on this journey. It has only started. We promise to keep getting you more and more interesting conversations on women and finance and how women can take charge of their financial destiny.